Hello. Today we're going to do a fremencial workout of a patient with a bicuspid aortic valve evaluated for TABR. First, just like a prior presentation, native workup, I'm going to look at the membrane septal length. So I'm going to go to this view. When I look at the base. Now, in bicuspid aortic valve, the septal length can be very short because that's just by the native anatomy, very close to the ventricular muscle. And you can see that here. And that's also another reason why patients with bicuspid aortic valve undergoing tower can have a higher pacemaker risk. So you can see that then maybe this is around the length of the septal length. And then you can, of course, do your still shot. Next, I'm doing automated segmentation. So you can see it's a very heavily calcified by cuspid valve just going up and down. You can see that this is a calcified by cuspid valve with a right and left rafe fusion. So this is a Severs type one. But you so in Severs type one, you can see here it's gonna be the same thing. First, you're gonna just go across the sinus with the open red circle, and then you put a red dot in the base of the left sinus. And then you do the same thing here to the right sinus, and then you go same thing with the non sinus. Very similar to a standard tricuspid valve workup. The only thing that's different is that your dot distribution will be a little bit asymmetric because it is a bicuspid. So I'm gonna go up. Now you can see that I'm a little bit off center in the non cusp so I'm gonna move go a little bit kind of a little clockwise until the sinuses disappear. So that's what will be my non, based on my non cuss. And then you can see this is the right cuss. This is pretty good. We've got a little bit over here, a little count of clock. And this is the left cuss. You can see I'm a little bit off center again. So. Now, when you have annular calcification, it can be very difficult to say, well, where's the true annular? So you just want to see the base of the sinuses disappear. Sometimes the motion artifact can be challenging as well. So if that's the case, you can see here, I'm going to stop right here and I'll show you how I would measure the annulus with the, this kind of calcium. So looks good. I'm going to go center line to confirm that everything is center line. I'm going to confirm now. So you can see that this is the annulus of this patient. Now I'm going to do the lasso two again. And then I'm going to just go quickly go around the annulus. And you can see here. So now you can see this is a chunk of annular calcium here. I don't go in here to trace inside because what will happen, I'll show you what happened here. This is a very important point. So if I do that, I'm going to have a much large, longer perimeter than estimated, I'm going to, my area is going to be smaller than actual old, because remember the valve is going to occupy the entire space here, including the calcium, and this calcium is going to get compressed or even at the risk of being pushed on. That's how you get wood injury. So I don't do that. I like to just go cut across the calcium. I don't go outside either, because if you go outside, you can see that here, your area is now overestimated. It's about 515 or so, now it's 522. So that can matter in terms of a sizing strategy and also root rupture risk. So I typically like to just cut it right across as much as possible to keep preserve the contour of the endless. So same thing here, right? You can see that here, I may be a little bit tighter here. And sometimes if you have a lot of booming, it's advantageous to try to drop that a little bit so you can click on the right, right part of the mouse so you can make it a little darker to reduce the booming artifacts. You can see, I just cut right across the calcium. I don't go outside. You can see again, if I go outside, your area is gonna be increased. The perimeter won't change much. And if I add some dots to go inside here, you can see my perimeter increase, but your area decreases. So just something to keep in mind when you have annular calcification, which is quite typical in bicuspid valves. So basically I do the same thing as I would do in a trileaflet valve, okay? Click on the annular dimension, save those images. I crop that, zoom in so I can get a maximal view and I go into the LVOT view. So you can see there's still LVOT calcium there. So you can see how I cut across the 
annulus, and you can see that I adjusted the LVOT a little bit. This will be the LVOT. I can I do it at five millimeter depth. That's my personal preference because we I find that most transcapsular valve will end up in that depth uh, on average. So you can see now this is the morphology of the bicuspid valve. This is C versus type one, as I mentioned. So I go up to the sinotubular junction, just like my previous workout video, and then I right click on the bottom left, get the sinus height, I then measure the sinotubular junction. I use the ruler with times two so I can get the long and short axis. I label as a sinusoidal junction. Now I look at the left main. You can see if I set the left main office here pretty well. And then I go right click here on the bottom left panel. And this is my left coronary height label. And I look at also the left sinus because that has implication in terms of coronary obstruction risk, especially in a small aortic root. So this is that. And then now I cut into half of the sinus height typically to get my sinus of well salva dimension so i click on the ruler go from the one commissure to the left sinus right sinus to the other opposite commissure and then i go non-sinus to the non-sinus to one of the other commissure and then i label them to left sinus right sinus and non-sinus so now it's important to make sure that you are by setting this properly. So you want to be able to see this is the rafe and that's where it located so that you can match the sinus and the commissure. So you can see that and just make some minor adjustment here. Let's just leave all these properly now. So here you go. So now let's look at this. So this anatomy would be either a 26 millimeter, right? Balloon expandable valve or a uh, 29 millimeter self-expanding valve uh, evolute uh, or possibly a 27 millimeter accurate or for uh, Navator. So depending on what valve you choose, uh, you know, you can certainly use that for your determination. But what I do typically do, let's say this is a balloon expandable valve, I would then draw a balloon expandable valve of a 26 millimeter box to represent this, to see how it occupies the root. Mostly concerned of the root rupture because this patient has annular and LVOT calcium. So I draw a vertical line that I've shown before. You basically use the two on the bottom left called custom length measurement. And you just draw, I draw 16 millimeters above the annulus. They'll get you around 80%, uh, 80 to 20 in terms of valve deployment. And you can see right click, custom length measurement going down to 20. And then now I go right click, and measurement and distance and I draw a 26 or a millimeter horizontal line to represent the valve. And this is how the valve will sit at 80, 20. You can draw a 90, 10, 100, zero, Whatever implant depth you want, doesn't matter. I just do it at 80-20 as a most conservative depth. Most people now implant a little bit higher with the balloon expandable valve. Now you can see the, how it fits here. If I have a big chunk of calcium inside this box at the base of the annulus or just above, I'll be concerned about annular injury because clearly this box is gonna occupy the aortic root space and whatever is inside is gonna get compressed or pushed outward. Another area thing that we I shown in my pre, in a previous video is to draw a circle on the top left panel on under measurements called ellipse, and you draw a full circle matching the size of your valve. And I'm going to right click and say keep circular, so I can adjust this to a 26 millimeter circle here. So if you're using a valve with a waist, and you can draw the circle representing the waist just to see how it will occupy the aortic root. But you can see that now I'm going to be showing this. And I do the one millimeter aortic root measurements. I do that at two millimeters, three millimeters, 
four millimeters, five millimeters, six millimeters, seven millimeters, eight millimeters, nine millimeters, and 10 millimeters. Now, some people ask, do you do a super annular or super annular sizing? I do not do that typically. Uh, but I, what I do measure sometimes is if you have a very asymmetric sinuses, this patient has relatively symmetric sinuses, uh, you can consider certainly a commissure to commissure distance just to see how it would fit, but it has not really affected my sizing strategy for say, I still prefer to size at the level of the annulus. So as I mentioned, next I go to the sinus tubular junction. And then I save that image. I go to the sinus. I center this circle here. And then I save the image. And I show the left main and I show save that image as well. This is some bicuspid roots typically are quite generous. So you can see that here with a 26 minute balloon expandable valve, there'll be plenty of space for redo tavern. If you're considering this patient, let's say uh, it's a little younger, but uh, they have a longer life expectancy and they ask about, can I get a redo tower? Certainly you can model the device. Uh, at least this one is balloon expandable, but you can also do a self expanding uh, overlay and see what the likelihood of the neo skirt or uh, and redo tower potentially with initial assessment. So now I'm going to go to the right. So I'm usually use a solid green dot and rotate it right to the right corner. You can see this patient probably have a non-dominant circulation. So this will be that you can see the right is small, so probably in a, a left dominant system. So this is the left side. So I'm going to take a screenshot of that. Then I go to the annulus. And so you can see now I can drop the gain here. I right click on the mouse and drop the cane to make the morphology a little bit more visible. I go to calcification to look at the ascending aorta, to look for any kind of calcification, label that. And then, as I mentioned, I go to the hockey puck view now to see how the morphology looks like. One thing that I'll be concerned about, and I'll show you here actually on the top, back to the top left panel, is that if your raphe here, okay, if your raphe here is very calcified, this is when you can see this is a 26 circle, but imagine let's say I do a 29 bow. I'm gonna put it into a 29 circle. And you can see all these calcium have to go somewhere, right? Outside this circle, because this is occupied, to be occupied by the uh, transcaptal valve. This could potentially risk root injury if this is heavily calcified, particularly in the raphe. And what will happen is that when you deploy the valve, the valve might actually shift towards the non-sinus because there's no raphe here. So all the leaflet calcium is gonna be compressed onto the sinus because the raphe is resisting you from expanding this way. So it might actually happen to shift that way with the transcaptal valve as you deploy. So with these kind of heavy calcification, we would definitely recommend uh, balloon, pre-ballooning or pre-dilating before you actually implant the valve. And also it might be make it easier to cross the valve as well so you don't get hung up. So here, let me go back to a 26 circle because this is patient is appropriately fitted for a 26 millimeter balloon expandable valve. So now I'm going to click the C-arm icon. The eyes to represent the C-arm angle. You can see I overlay at the green dot and you can see that here, that is your free cuspal planar view. And if you pick the angle to here and go here and cross that, that's your roughly aortic root angle. You can take a shot on that. And then as I mentioned before on the top right panel now, I match this RAO 10, call 16. That's kind of, these are the calcium landmarks I will look at on the floral to help me position the valve. This I can do without even going into the case. I can plan this already. 
So you can see this is a summary of the bicuspid aortic valve workup with a Sievers type one morphology. I'll show you next time on a Sievers type zero, which is a little bit different, but have the same principle. So if you look at the report now, this is similar to a tri-leaflet power workup. You can see the analyst LBOT with the calcification and then the overlay of the 26 balloonic millimeter balloon expandable valve. You can see the valve relative to the RAFE location and distribution, the calcification. And of course the left main and the right coronary hockey puck view and the fluoroscopic implant angle. You can save this file to a PDF and share it with your team. Of course, you can also save the session to however you want. So thank you very much. I'll see you next time and talk about Sievers Type 0 by Cuspid Power Workout.